cloud. All right, go for it. Just beep like Sarah did. No, uh, okay. Um, so hi everyone, uh, I'm Nicholas van Nieuwenhoven. Um, I'm at the University of New Brunswick, uh, which is in Fredericton in Canada. And uh, the title of my presentation is Neotoma Sets Sail, which is pretty fitting as well with the symbol of the university, uh, which you see at the bottom there, which has a, a sail in it. And also because I think I might be a bit of an odd one out, because if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm steward of the only uh, marine database in Neotoma, which is the Marine Dinoflagellates database. So if we can go to the next slide, Simon, please. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Okay, so to start off with a bit of context, um, the Marine Dinoflagellates database was initiated back in June 2021. Um, and this was a, and the incentive for that was a large research project, uh, largely funded by the Belmont Forum, which has been seen in a, a number of other slides already. And the project is called Niche Arctic, which is a, sort of a loose acronym for from Nunavik to Iceland, climate, human, and culture through time across the coastal subarctic North Atlantic, which is quite a mouthful. So the objective of this project is to uh, gather paleo environmental records, both from the marine realm and the terrestrial realm, and link the climate and environmental changes that we see in these records to uh, changes in cultural activities in the high latitudes, um, as we can see those in uh, archaeological data. And one of the uh, outcomes set out by the project was to make the data of the paleo environmental records um, easily and publicly uh, accessible through a, a well-organized and freely accessible platform such as uh, Neotoma. And uh, my role in this is to take care of the Holocene dinoflagellate cyst uh, records and other people, uh, as for instance, I think Natasha Roy, who's working with Anne de Vernal at Geotop, is uh, contributing with uh, Holocene uh, pollen records. And uh, I believe Harlina also mentioned the Initiatic project and just contributing with, uh, with uh, biomarker data. So um, if you can go to the next slide, please, Simon. No, I also lost, no, the, the one before. And I see also the layout has gone lost here, but it uh, doesn't really matter. Um, the things that were done, uh, so this database is pretty new. And the first thing that, of course, you had to do was uh, complete the taxonomy and update some of the taxa that were already in Neotoma. And uh, maybe I can uh, give a quick side note here on one of the particularities of our proxy. And that is that in sedimentary records, we usually uh, are dealing with dinoflagellate cysts. And that's why in the top uh, header there, I added the cysts uh, in between parentheses. Um, and these cysts, um, they represent a specific stage in the life cycle of the dinoflagellates. And these cysts also preserve pretty well in contrast to uh, the cell or the envelope of the living dinoflagellates, which usually degrades pretty quickly. Um, the unfortunate thing is that these cysts have been known from the sedimentary or the fossil records uh, since well before their biological affinity to, dinofl to dinoflagellates was established. So as a consequence, uh, many of the species that we are dealing with have their own uh, paleontological taxonomic name. And this uh, taxonomy of the cysts to some degree overlaps with the taxonomy of the living uh, uh, dinoflagellates. And this is uh, uh, especially the case for like more recent species, more recently described species. So what we often are dealing with is that for a cyst that we find, um, the dinoflagellate of that cyst will have its own biological name and the cyst will have its own paleontological name. So we have two taxonomic names for uh, one uh, biological entity. Whereas for more recently described uh, dinoflagellate species, um, the cyst of that species will simply be referred to as cyst of dinocyst spe uh, dinoflagellate species, this and that. So anyway, that was one of the first uh, major things that needed to be done. There was updates and completed taxonomy in uh, Neotoma. Then uh, after that was done, I started gathering Holocene dinosaur records, and I did that from a variety of sources, as for instance from Pangaea, um, from supplementary material to papers. I also contacted some authors uh, directly so they could send me their data. And then after the quality control of the data, I could start uploading uh, using Tilia. So I can go to the next slide, please, Sam. So there's not that much yet uh, in Neotoma. Um, since we started, I've been able to upload 51 sites, which contain in total 56 data sets. I must admit that I do not really know um, how many samples are represented by these 56 uh, data sets because I did not really know an efficient way of extracting that kind of data 
from near to my UCM I'm still pretty new to it. And to my defense, I have been concentrating mostly on uploading the data and not as much on extracting the data from Neotoma. What I do know, however, is that um, over one, 220 uh, genus and species names uh, were uploaded to Neotoma. And this is probably an underrepresentation of the total number of taxa that is represented by the dinoflagellate uh, database, because quite often in our uh, records, we also include uh, other palynomorphs, so other organic world microfossils, such as pollen and spores, uh, ocritarchs, uh, ciliate cysts, and so on. Okay, if we can go to the next slide. So you might have noticed on the previous map that uh, only sites from the North Atlantic were shown. And this brings me to uh, what's coming next. And in my case, this would be pretty tightly linked to uh, my own uh, needs and wants. And that is the fact that um, when you are uploading, uploading data using Tilia for the marine domain, the only geopolitical division that you can choose from the drop down list is the Atlantic Ocean. So currently I'm sitting on about 20 or 25 uh, data sets from the Pacific or from Hudson Bay, from the Arctic Ocean um, that are ready to be uploaded, but I'm not sure how I should proceed since I cannot choose any other marine basin from that dropdown list. So that would be my main uh, request for the near future is how should one proceed with sites that are not from the Atlantic Ocean. So, since I'm pretty new, I will uh, not exaggerate with any further requests, and I will leave it here for me. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, 